Hey guys, this is Augie. Augie is a golden retriever, and today I'm gonna show you how we are going to convert his coat into something just absolutely gorgeous. He's shedding a bit, as you can see. Um, no problem, we're gonna take care of all that. I'm gonna show you how I go through a full groom with a golden retriever from start to finish. We're going to trim him a little bit. We're gonna trim these fringes. We're gonna tighten up some of these fringes. We're gonna trim up these paw pads. I'm gonna show you how I do that and trim the feet. Sometimes on a golden, I'll do a little trimming back here around the behind. Believe it or not, he looks like he has just the right amount of pants on today. Let's get started. The first thing that I do with a golden retriever or a double coated breed is I completely brush them out before we get them in the tub. So let's do that. I'm using my Kenchi Slicker brush. This is the large size. Oh, he doesn't like that. There you go. And sometimes you got to keep a hand underneath them and remind them that you want to, you want them to remain standing. So they, you know, we just have to, we have to guide them. We have to let them know what we want from them. And we're getting hair in the brush. And this is the reason why we are pre-brushing Augie before the bath, because we want to remove any dead hair that easily wants to come out right now. Believe it or not, when he's in the tub, we're going to remove a ton more of his hair. And I'm going to show you my secret to do that when he's in the tub. Right now, pre-brushing Augie, we will see you in a minute when I get him in the tub. We're going to use our Prima Encore system to wash Augie today. What I'm going to show you today in the tub, once we have washed him and then apply the conditioner, how I easily deshed most of his undercoat in the tub with a brush and a comb and conditioner. So let's get to it. We're going to start with the Prima bathing system. The products that are in the system today is the Bark to Basics Crystal Clear, which is a hypoallergenic shampoo. And I've already mixed that into my Prima system. I'm also using the Coat Handler Undercoat Control conditioner for him today, as well as we're going to be using the TropiClean Facial Scrub for his facial today with a loofah. I'll show you how I use a loofah, and I hope you guys take advantage of that at home, too. Those are the tub products that we're going to be using, so let's get to it. You really want to work it into the skin, so use your other hand and just kind of move the hair up. You notice I didn't pre-rinse Augie. There's no need to do that with the Prima bathing system. You do want to allow the shampoo to sit on your dog's coat for about four to five minutes so that it can really break down the dirt and grime. That's how it's designed to work. And I'll tell you what, the Prima Encore system and the Prima Salon model, both of them, they work the same. They're amazing. I have both models. You know, I have a demo of the Salon model on my channel, and I'll link it in the card for you guys if you're interested in checking that out. After you watch how we get this beautiful guy gorgeous today. And I do wash their face with proper clean facial scrub. We'll be getting to that in a minute. I just want you to notice how beautifully clean this coat is getting already. And obviously you can tell when you use a Prima bathing system. Washing a big dog like Augie is pretty much effortless. I'm just kind of moving the hair around and letting the Prima bathing system do all the work. But the results that this produces is outstanding. Especially, you're going to see it big time on this double coat today. Really work it into the skin. You need it to get all the way into the skin in order to break down the dirt and grime in Augie's coat. I want to show you one thing real quick with this system. The nozzle, I can open the nozzle up. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is all the way closed. You see how that just shoots a, a harder shot. Now you're obviously going to go through more shampoo that way, and I don't need it opened up like that for Augie today. 
but my goodness, if I was doing, if I was working on with say a Samoyed, I can lock it into place too. A Samoyed or a, a new fun one with a really thick, heavy coat or a Chow Chow, I would open that up and make sure I was getting all the way into the skin because that's the secret guys, cleaning from the skin out. Now I have basically washed this side of Augie with shampoo. We haven't conditioned yet. Now is the time I like to run a tub brush. This is an old Le Pouche brush that I've dedicated to be my tub brush. I, remember, I do want the shampoo to sit on him for four to five minutes. And now is a good time to go ahead and kind of brush through his coat with the lay of the coat. As you can see, I'm brushing down the way his coat likes to lay naturally. And I'm going to be getting quite a bit of hair out of him right now, just with this technique alone. Let's show you what we got already. He's all right, buddy. It's okay to lose some hair every now and then. Of course, there's a lot of soap in it, but we are getting a, a good bit of undercoat. Hey, that's yucky. That's okay, we're gonna make you beautiful. That's the idea. We're trying to get as much of this out right now so that when we're drying him, force drying him and brushing him, we're just working with beautiful skin and coat. This is a super awesome trick and I hope you guys take advantage of it at home. But don't forget, after I rinse him and then I condition him, we're gonna be using a comb and that's really gonna show you how much we can get out of our dogs in the tub. It's good to do so because we know we're getting them clean. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how I use the Tropiclean facial scrub and a loofah to really clean Augie's face really good. I'm gonna rinse his head. I'm holding his ear tight to his head so that I'm not getting any water in his ear. I'm gonna tilt the nose down and we're just gonna rinse his face. I'm protecting his nose, allowing him still to breathe, obviously. Keep that ear flat into the head, and we're gonna rinse all behind it, just loosening it up, build up in the coat, so we can really wash him and get him really clean. And you want a lot of water on your dog when you're gonna use the facial scrub. You want him to be soaking wet. So we're gonna grab our loofah. I'm gonna actually wet the loofah. And I'm using lukewarm water, guys, when I wash a dog. I don't want the water too hot. That opens up the pores and it can invite bacteria in if there's any type of underlying problem if you're not sure of. Now I applied, what, two or three pumps of the Tropiclean facial scrub and these loofahs just push your shampoo to all new levels. And this is safe around his eyes, that's why I'm choosing to use it. I use it on all dogs and I can really get around the mouth because we know that gets quite dirty when they eat. The muzzle area, this is a very safe product and that's why I use it, guys. Now I am gonna use my Prima Encore to wash around his ears and the top of his head here. I'm just getting this as clean as I can with the Tropiclean Facial Scrub. Get in those lips, guys. This can, you can get, they can get little, little infections in there, so you wanna get that all clean. Now we're going to just finish it with my Prima bathing system, holding the ear down, pinching it shut so I can clean all the way up to it. Very important to get your dog's face clean. Pinching the ear shut, holding it towards the head. Now I'm gonna pinch it shut so I can wash. I don't wanna get water in his ears, but I am gonna be cleaning out the ears after the bath with ear cleaning solution. So if by chance any water did enter the ears, we're going to be flushing it out with a safe product for ears, which is the Bark to Basics ear cleaner is what I like to use. Now for a thorough rinse before I condition Augie. Just rinse straight off the ears, hold them to the head, and you can pin that ear closed with your thumb and rinse in here. You want to rinse that. Dogs get really greasy there. You really want to make sure you wash it. So after we thoroughly rinse Augie, we're going to apply that conditioner and I'm going to show you another magic trick with a comb and conditioner. It's so awesome, isn't it, Augie Doggy? 
So he's soaking wet, we've rinsed him. You definitely want to condition the head and the ears under the jaw. We're just spraying it on them. These mixing bottles make it easy to apply your products to your dogs when you're bathing them. Shampoo and conditioners, different rinses. You definitely want your dog to be soaking wet because that's gonna allow the conditioner to work in the coat the way it's meant to. So I'm just squeezing it into his coat as you can see. And then I'm gonna massage it through, massage it around. And as I'm doing this, especially with that undercoat control conditioner, it's loosening up any other undercoat in there that is saying, yeah, I'll come out of here and play. So that's what we want. We wanna loosen up the undercoat and then we're gonna take a comb and we're gonna remove it. And this is another reason why it's important that you brush your dog before you get them in the tub. With the comb, we have a coarse side and a fine side, and we're going to start combing the conditioner through the coat. Guys, look at this. I mean, his, I wish you could touch it. It just feels like silk, but what this is doing is it's evenly dispersing the conditioner through Augie's coat and sliding out undercoat at the same time. See that? Be gentle. If you get into a heavy area like this, gently keep combing until it goes through it. Don't take long strokes, quick short strokes until it goes through it. And I'm telling you, you have no idea how amazing this dog's coat is going to look and feel when he's done because of the way we are prepping his coat. This is how you prepare a double coat, guys. the hair that we got out of Augie in the tub. Now we're gonna totally rinse him and get him back up on the grooming table and I got some more tricks to show you. Guys, remember our goal is a totally product-free, airy, clean coat. And that means we have to thoroughly rinse all the product out of Augie here in the tub so that he, we leave no residue behind. That it will only cause buildup and things to want to collect in his coat shortly after his groom. So the idea obviously is to over rinse, thoroughly rinse your dog, as well as how do you know when they're thoroughly rinsed? Well, I start at the head and let everything work down. But when the water starts to run clear off your dog, as you see right now, there's a little product still coming out, but it's starting to run clear. That means we've rinsed everything out. And you want your sprayer really close to the skin so it gets all the way in, especially when we're talking about a double coat. See, there's still product coming out here. So we keep rinsing. Now Augie's all rinsed. We're just about ready to get him out of the tub, but I need to clean his ears. I'm using Bark to Basic Ear Cleaner. I have really soaked it on a cotton ball, and I'm gonna squeeze it down into his ear, and then I'm gonna clean as far as I can see. Even this little ear flappy here. Clean all that under ear. And then I'm gonna let him shake it out. And that's good, because when he shakes, if he had a lot of debris down in these ears, it would come to the surface, and I would wipe it out with the cotton ball. But as you can see, his ears, his ears look great. And I like to do the ears after the bath because if any water did get in there, I've just cured that by using my Bark to Basics ear cleaning solution. So we don't have to worry about water causing problems in those ears. towel Augie off with the absorber towel. I use them all the time in here guys and I know most of you have already picked up one or two for yourself and I've been reading your comments and you're loving them and that's what I hoped for. I only want to bring to you products that are going to add value to your pet's lives at home and make your job of grooming them easier. Good boy. It's good that he's shaking off water too because that helps. <laughs> he's a thick coat. We got to get him as dry as possible. But these absorber towels hold like three times their weight in water. It's, it's insane, the water that they pull out of your dog. And even if you're not able to force dry your dog, 
this is just such a benefit. I mean, this just came off of him when I was toweling him on the table. It's, and then you just wring it out and you continue on, right big guy? You just continue on to dry your dog and it's so soft. It's so soft. It's so soft. It's so soft. I know. See, it's very nice and gentle. Yeah. If you guys haven't picked up one for yourself, there's a link in the description below for the absorber towel. I am affiliated with it. And you will get 10% off your first purchase. So go get you one or two or 10. You'll love them. I also use them in the house <laughs> for like everything. Wiping down the shower, doing dishes, just cleaning up messes, cleaning up dog messes, pee in the carpet. Of course you would throw it in the washing machine afterwards, but you never dry them in the, in the dryer. You wring them out and store them damp right back into the container that they came in. Okay, so Augie's pretty dry here. We're ready to force dry, but before we force dry, I am going to brush him and comb him one more time. Guys, I can't tell you enough how important it is working his coat. I just love you. This is how you de-shed your dog properly. This is how you properly maintain your golden retriever's coat. Come here, honey. Good job. I'm going to hook him here so he stays, stays facing forward. If I can find your hook. Good job. Okay. Let's stand up here, buddy. All right. You want your dog facing the grooming arm. Now I'm going to use my regular grooming comb and I'm going to completely go through Augie one more time. And look, guys, we are still getting a good bit of hair out of Augie. This is how we do it. The steps I'm showing you right now, this is the secret. This is how you do it. And remember, we haven't dried him yet. We're working on it. We dried him a lot with the absorber towel, but we're getting ready to force dry him. And that's going to pull even more out of Augie. And then don't forget, we're going to be trimming Augie. I'm going to, not a haircut. I'm going to show you how I trim the furnishings. That's all we do on a golden retriever. Right. Now before I force dry Augie, I want to mist a little quicker slicker in his coat. Just see how far away I am? I'm just misting. I do have my stand dryer on him. I'm going to take that off him for a second. I'm just trying to just get a little spritz of this in his coat. And what this does is this is going to help me even more to de-shed anything that wants to come out. I'm going to rub it through the coat. And it's also just going to make his coat amazingly soft and repellent of dirt after we're done grooming. It helps to repel dirt and debris from your dog's coat. It's so soft. It smells so good. That's a nature specialty product, guys. It's one of my favorites. I will definitely link all the products I'm using today in the description below for you. So now it's evenly dispersed all throughout, even around his ears, everywhere. I'm gonna take my Kenchi Slicker brush and I'm just going to brush it through his coat before I force dry him, just to make sure that I got it all through his coat nice and evenly. So the quicker slicker can help us to de-shed Augie Boy when we're forced drying. He is mostly at this point de-shedded, but we're still getting hair. It's a constant thing with our double-coated breeds, guys. That's why I don't only brush them once and call it good. I brushed him before the bath. I brushed and combed him during the bath with shampoo and then with conditioner. I combed him after he was toweled off and still damp, and now I'm brushing him one more time. This is how you properly prepare a golden retriever's coat, and I hope you guys follow all the steps I'm showing you today so you can get the same results that I'm going to get today with Augie on your pets. I'm 
into my Stern Bayer force dryer. You want to hold your force dryer away from the hair as long as the hair is long. So if his coat's about this long, that's about how far I want to hold the force dryer in order for it to do its job. Now I'm on low speed right now. I'm just trying to whisk some of this water away from his coat so I can really seriously start drying him in a moment. And I am going to switch the nozzle to a flat head just because that's better for a flat coat like his. So we'll be doing that in a minute. I'm still on low. And now is the time that I would trim all these nails because he's out of the tub. He is a very active dog, as you can see. There is really nothing that I can trim on Augie's nails. He is so active, and sometimes that's the case. You can see that it's down to the quick. So I won't be trimming his nails today because he is a very active dog, and I don't need to trim his nails. After he gets out of the tub, that's when I would trim nails because the nails are less brittle. Wow, you can see a mist of, of moisture coming out of him. He's still got moisture in his skin and coat. So as he gets dry, we won't see that anymore. And if anything that wants to come out of the coat at this point is going to come out now. I can see, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but there's little, there's algae hair flying all around right now. It's blowing out the undercoat from his coat. If you have a double-coated breed at home, you would be very wise to purchase a force dryer. This Shern Bayo is very affordable. I purchased it so I could see if it was worth it to recommend to you guys. And I've been using it now for probably about six months. Yes, I absolutely think it is extremely affordable and effective. And if you have a double-coated dog, you really should be interested in purchasing a force dryer. If shedding is something that bothers you, this will help you tremendously. Especially if you follow all the steps that I showed you today, guys. Augie is completely dry. I am going to thoroughly brush him out one more time, loosen their leash. You can get a hold of it and hold them up here. You want to brush every inch of this dog, guys, starting from the head down. And the reason for this is we are finally getting every last bit of undercoat out of Augie. Still getting it. Before we trim him, which we are going to just be trimming these ears, pads of feet, and his furnishings. That's all we're trimming. That's all you should trim on a golden retriever. You never give them a haircut. No need to ever go through a golden retriever with a snap-on comb. It's not necessary. Because as you can see, his coat is completely rejuvenated. We've just cleaned the filter of Augie, which is his undercoat. And that's what, that's what we're doing here today, guys. That's the important thing. He can get air to his skin. That's what needs to happen. If you don't brush him, you don't bathe him, you don't maintain your dog's undercoat, you're going to feel like, yeah, they need to go to the groomer and be shaved. This is what they need, the procedure we did today. I want you guys to totally be aware of that. And trimming a golden retriever is out of the question. Don't do it. Now we're going to be trimming and shaping in Augie's ear. I'm going to use my Kenchi flash clipper set to a number 10. And I'm just going to trim at his earlobe right here. Just to vent the ears a little. That's it. Be careful of this flap. You don't want to come at it this way. You could cut it. You would come off it sideways like that. Okay? So now we're going to tidy this up. You can see he's got a lot of fringes and loose hair. So I want this to kind of lay flat against his cheek. So I'm going to take my Kenchi thinning shears and I'm going to just blend that down like this. Holding the ear flap up 
and we're just going to blend this down. It's okay, bud. So it lays flatter and his ear will lay flat against his head and it also helps to vent the ear. And I know you're tired. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna hold the ear up and I'm just going to outline and contour the shape of his ear, that's all. Getting rid of some of this bulk, that's all we do. You don't ever need to use a clipper on a golden retriever's ear. We're just thinning in his natural shape of his ear. So it looks nice and tidy. And I'll even do a little bit of scissor over comb just to blend down so this ear, this hair lays flat against into his ear. And it just looks nice. I know he's tired. And that's a beautiful golden retriever ear right there, my friends, vented so that he gets nice airflow and to keep his ears healthy. Now I'm going to use a straight shear in my Kenchi lightning shear. And we're going to shave the pads of the feet with my Kenchi Flash on a 30 setting. Just what he stands on. That's it. Just to clean this up. And his pads aren't, they don't get very overgrown. He's very lucky in that area. I mean, a lot of golden retrievers, this would be packed. We shave them in a V shape in that large pad, just like that. Brush loose anything underneath. Come around the pad this way. Don't go at it this way. Come around it this way. And I'm just going to tidy up the bottom of his foot. I'm going to brush everything up gently on top using my Kenchi Lightning Shear. We're just going to make all those little fringes disappear. You're just scissoring with a thinning shear. You could do this with a straight shear too, and I often do. But I just think it looks so natural with our blender. Now, there's a knuckle right here. I am going to blend or scissor either way all the hair off of right there. Now here for his flagging on his leg, when you hold the leg out as if they were taking a step, you just want to neaten that up so that it's, it's even. You know what I'm saying? Just so it's even. Looks like somebody was trimming on him. This is the first I've trimmed him since COVID. And uh, it, looks, it looks like he's had a little trimming. So somebody didn't, they didn't do a bad job either. So I just want to say mom or sissy at home, somebody decided to tidy him up a little bit and he looks good. So that's all that I want to see there is just it kind of hanging nice and even. I would prefer to see more flagging on a golden retriever's leg here, guys. But his, it's been trimmed a little bit. So we're just going to tidy it up. And you can see where I trimmed this all nice and neat and tidy up to this knuckle. That's to keep his foot clean. That's to keep him clean when he's outside playing. Should the length of the tail be on a golden retriever? Approximately right here to his hock. 
and okay. that's approximately how long the tailbone is. This is his tailbone. So this is all extra hair. I'm just going to shorten it up and run your finger down to the tailbone so you know where it is. It's right there. And I'm just going to shorten it up a little bit. But that gives him balance and makes him look very symmetric. Then if you hold the tail out, shake it down, you can see what you need to do. You want to shape in a U shape to the tip where you just trimmed. And it just looks nice no matter how he holds his tail. And for Augie's underline here, just want to hold his little foot out like he's taking a step and just tidy this up. He doesn't really have anything for me to take off. The tuck up is right behind the last rib. So if he had a lot of furnishings, I would want to angle it this way and towards the elbow. So just behind the last rib here is his tuck up. So I would angle my scissors that way, leaving kind of a little V shape right there, if that makes sense, guys. The last thing that we're going to do is here on Augie's bib, which is this coat that hangs down. As you can see, guys, I am easily getting a comb through him. So one more trick that I do is I would like this to lay flat. As you can see, we have curls. So here's a trick. Take your thinning shear and drag and pull it right where the hair is curling. And you're just going to disappear those curls. They're going to end up laying flat. We're just accentuating his bib. You see what I'm doing, guys? A minor change. Watch how this curl will lay flat when we thin it, right at the curl, right where it starts to curl. It's just small little details like that, guys, that make such a big difference. That's it. That's all we need to do. I'm snipping and pulling, and it's still cutting. You see that? That's it. Now we're going to take a 360 look at Augie. absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry so you can provide quality care for your beloved pets at home. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell because together we are going to increase the bond you share with your pet and add even more value to their lives.